spine surgery broadcast. And we broadcast all of our surgeries live at the Duke Spine Institute. We've been doing that for nine years. Our surgeries are broadcast live over YouTube, Periscope, and Facebook. So if you're watching on one of those platforms, you can actually ask questions during surgery and get some answers. All right, Dr. Duke here, okay? <clears throat> Our patient is awake for the first uh, beginning of the surgery until we're ready for him to go to sleep, which will be ready for him soon, but I gotta do a few things first. Now you've watched my surgeries before, right? So you know that we're gonna keep you awake for a few minutes, I need your help. And then once we get to where we need to go, we're gonna put you to sleep, all right? All right, so the first thing that's gonna happen, you'll feel a little, a little uh, prick of pain as I inject medicine, okay? Just a tiny little poke. That's my hand feeling around, just relax. It's real important that you don't move around, okay? Just lay still. If you feel pain, just say, ouch, and I'll take care of it for you, all right? All right. So remember, ouch, if you feel pain, and I'll stop and give you more pain medicine, okay? All right, yeah, right now I'm injecting the pain medicine. That's uncomfortable, I know. So today we're going to be doing L5S1 Duke Laser Disc Repair for a herniated disc. And our patient has, um, and same thing on the other side, okay? Our patient has had a spinal fusion already um, at L45. How many years ago was your spinal fusion done? All right, so about 11 years ago. And he's developed pain now below the fusion. And if you're looking at the monitor or screen, you'll be able to see that there's a, uh, a herniated disc down below the fusion. You're doing great, by the way. I'll let you know how everything's going, okay? All right. So, in the beginning, I've got to figure out the right way to get down there, okay? That's why I need your help. And then we'll put you to sleep before we start the actual real part of the surgery. All right, Sean. So if you're looking now, you can actually see the metal on the x-ray. That's his implant. He had a fusion done. They went in the front, correct? So they went through his belly. And where was your surgery done 11 years ago? Where? More local. I didn't hear him. Denver Spine Center. So they went through his belly, did a, a fusion at L45 at the Denver Spine Center. And, and you know, you did pretty well, right, for a few years? Or do you still have pain afterwards? Uh-huh. Yeah. So he still had pain afterwards, but it turns out he has disc problems above and below the fusion. That's perfect, Jordan, by the way. And so we looked at his MRI and we saw herniations above, we saw herniations below. And I said, okay, well, where's the pain coming from? And he pointed below. And I said, do you have any pain above? He said, no. So the herniation above his old fusion is not causing any problems at all. And that's why we're not treating it today. We don't treat herniations that don't cause symptoms. There's no reason to do that. Herniations that don't cause symptoms are normal. People have that all the time. I mean, it's not normal like in the sense structurally it's normal, but it's normal for people to have wrinkles, right? We don't treat wrinkles just because you have wrinkles. We only treat wrinkles when they affect your vision. And when you can't see because of your wrinkles, then we, we have to do something, all right? Otherwise, you're gonna not be able to drive, you might hit somebody. So when you become impaired, functionally impaired, by a structural abnormality of the body, that's when it's time to do something about it, okay? And that's, uh, that's what we do. We don't fix all disc herniations, we only fix disc herniations that need to be fixed because they're affecting people's function, their quality of life. And so that's what we're dealing with here, okay? 
yeah shot AP so we're getting close I think we need to go a little more anterior you're doing great by the way <clears throat> that's your uh, facet joint that we're dealing with okay yeah so I'm a little too medial so let's go back to a lateral view we're gonna change our trajectory and that's why I need your help in the very beginning okay you're doing fantastic by the way once we get to where we need to be I'm gonna put you to sleep okay deal shot so do you have any family members or friends that are watching all right well if you're out there watching this young man's surgery give us a shout out all right that's my cell phone misbehaving Shot. You're doing great, by the way. Shot. 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 So we're just navigating to that bad disc. Remember we talked about it? Your L5S1. <coughs> Any questions for me from the patient? Okay, just don't move and you're doing fine. Let's get an AP. All right. Patel finished eight minutes ago, so where is, uh, should be coming, right? Yeah, because we're just about ready for him. All right, go back to a lateral. You're doing great, buddy, all right? You have any questions for me? You excited to get rid of your back pain? All right. Shot. All right. Where do you feel that? How far down? All right. So that's why we have you awake. Hmm. It's better? Yeah. All right, so we got to look and see. Everything looks lined up to me. Let's get another shot and see what we got. We may be, huh? Yeah. Yeah, no, you're, we're, you're fine. We're, we're not even near your um, nerve for your leg right now. Now, which leg normally bothers you, Sean? Wasn't it the left side that was worse? Sean? Huh? Shot. AP. <coughs> Thank you, Doctor. How's it going? <coughs> All right. Let's try this. Are you okay? No pain in the leg, right? Let's go lateral. <clears throat> You're doing great, by the way. Everything's going well. Let me know if you feel that pain again, okay? I don't expect you to, but, huh? Right there? All the way down. Let's get an AP. Is it better? And you feel it shoot all the way from your back down your leg? Yeah, that's what I want to know.
And besides that, you feel really good, right? Then no, no issues? All right, let's try to keep the blood pressure somewhere nice, around 110. You're doing fantastic, by the way. John? Lateral. Same thing. Let me know if you feel any discomfort. It's normal to have a little bit. John. Sean? 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 Just relax. You're doing great. Uh, looks pretty good right there. Maybe getting deflected though. Sean, let's get an AP. You comfortable? close I think we can get this here keep I need a shot yeah you comfy where do you feel that to the toe this makes no sense AP are you rotated is that why go AP let's see where we are still feel it no. huh no. <clears throat> Yes? Do you normally ever get that feeling during the day? Shot. Shot. Lateral.
Try some orbit. Let's see if our orbit is off. Shot. And the other way. Shot. I mean, that almost looks better, but then the pelvis doesn't line up. Shot. Give me an AP. Back to a lateral. Shot. 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 This is really about getting it just right to the millimeter, unfortunately. So you have to keep going till you get it right, Sean. Are you having the same problem as before or not? You awake? None of that pain? AP. It's right on the disc. Lateral. So it was just maybe the orbit was off. No pain down your leg. Must be the the orbit was off then. Interesting. I think we're okay. Let me know if you feel any discomfort, okay? You're doing great, by the way. You're really, really doing great, Sean. Huh? Yeah, I'm sorry about that. Yep, I'll give you something for that. Go ahead. Uh, can we get that blood pressure down? I really want it around 100, 110. Shot. That's okay. Shot. Shot. Sorry about that. Everything's okay. You're okay. John?
shot. Shot. AP. So for those of you watching, we're doing uh, the first part of the surgery, stage one, which is accessing the disc and, and the tear in the back of the disc. And this takes um, time and it's probably the most time intensive part of the surgery, to be quite honest with you. Shot. Um, but this is the, the also the most important part of the surgery, in my opinion. It's the part where we get into the target zone of where to fix where to fix the disc. And if we don't get in just right, and I mean just right, shot within a millimeter, probably half a millimeter precision, especially at L5S1. If we don't nail it perfect, then the results aren't going to be what we want. And that's yes. Oh yeah. Okay. I'm sorry. I understand. Shot. AP. Can you grab my phone? And watch the table. You doing all right? No pain down your leg? Uh huh. Okay, so it's looking a little more lateral than I want. What was that, guys? Shot. Shot. So I I figured out what's going on with your spine. It's quite interesting. It's quite a bit rotated here at five one. Shot. It's twisted. It's not straight. And it's uh, it's pretty subtle on the uh, imaging. So it's not something that we really expected to see on the x-ray, but it's there. AP. Now you can see the orbit is not right there. You see that? The back of L5 right there is a double shadow. So let's play with the orbit when we come back and try to get it right. Yeah, that's better. All right, let's go back and get the orbit corrected. I think you're off by a degree. So we're using uh, an x-ray machine to navigate to the disc and the tear in the back of the disc on both sides. You comfy? Yeah. All right, did you fix the orbit? Uh, do we go maybe the wrong way? I don't know. I don't see the double shadow in the back of the vertebral body. I don't know. That's That may be a little bit better. It's hard to say. Nothing down your leg, right? You feel it in your butt crack? All right. All right. So, folks, um, this this patient came to us. He has at L. I'm just going to draw on your back. You're going to like this, okay? Because you get to watch this later. He has an L4 and L5. He has a fusion. We didn't do the fusion. Somebody in Colorado did. So he's got this big cage there with screws going into four and five and this was put in through the belly then he blew he's basically damaged the disc below the fusion this is the sacrum and the disc below the fusion has tears in it okay and that's the l5 s1 disc l5 s1 because it's the disc or cushion between the l5 bone and the s1 bone or sacrum okay the S1 is here. So that's our target today. That's where we believe his pain's coming from. And there's really no test in the world that will tell us that 
The MRI doesn't tell you where pain comes from. The patient does. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? Five. 5. All right. It's interesting because it's all trapped in the front of the disc. How bad is that on a scale of 1 to 10? 10? Uh, yeah. Is that where you typically get your pain? Uh, is that the location of your typical pain that you get in your back? Uh, it's, it's a hair above. Okay, yeah. All right. A hair above. So that's, that's pretty much it. Um, we're going to put you to sleep, okay? And when you wake up, we'll be done with your surgery. You bet. All right. I'm going to start with the right side. Mm-hmm. Because I think that positioning is better. All right. So I'm going to switch sides. So basically, uh, is he, let me know when he's asleep. Can you count out loud from 1 to 100 so we can hear you count? Let's get those wires out of the way. Just hold them up. Uh. You're doing great. Keep counting. Shot. So at this point, we, we've accessed the L5S1 disc on both sides. And I've been more impressed with the results on the right side being the source of the pain. Because when we did the discogram, the left side, I feel like it was trapped in the front of the disc, but the right side you could actually see was in the back of the disc where the painful part is. And so he responded by saying, yeah, that's, I feel a 10 out of 10 pain, shot. So now we're putting our guide wire down and we're going to, uh, I'm just going to take this one out. Yeah, hold on. Do you have any uh, steroid? Epidural. Take that. Oh, no. So we're not going to do the left side because it really wasn't producing as typical pain. So we were testing both sides. Put some pressure. All right, let's see what we got. Shot. The right side, on the other hand, that's where you had that 9 out of 10 pain. Shot. I've just got to make sure the guide wire is in far enough before I take out the needle. Shot. It looks like it is. Yeah, we look good. So now I've got my guide wire in place. I can take out my needle. Because I know that the guide wire is creating a nice path. Perfect. And look at the um, look at the X-ray. You can see the dye leaking out at the back of the disc where the herniation is, and that was from this right-sided injection. All right. Any questions from our audience? Yes. What expectations do you have for his recovery? So the typical patient that has the surgery for back pain for a herniated disc is going to have immediate relief of their back pain they've had for years. Whatever their back, however long they've had that back pain from this disc. So the L5S1 disc has tears in it. And the tear on the left side appears to have healed over for the most part, which is why it really didn't produce his pain. Uh, but the one on the right side is definitely painful. And we got a nine to, t we got a basically a 10 out of 10 pain there. So I think his back pain will be gone with this surgery as soon as he wakes up. And he'll take one hour to recover. Is that it right there? Yes, sir. And after an hour, he can basically go home. Now, he can't drive a car today, but he can go shopping, eating, hang out with friends, basically do normal things. Um, 
and then he's going to recover overnight. Shot. He'll come back tomorrow for a check, and then he can go home. So I think his recovery should be very quick. Shot. Take that. As long as the surgery goes well, which we expect it will for him. I can feel this going through the tear, by the way. Shot. Look at that. It's pushed the dilator back so there's a lot of pressure inside the disc from inflammation shot and that's what we're gonna fix today is that in far enough shot yeah we're in good here you go so the the pressure of inside the disc we call it intradiscal pressure is high why is it high because He's got a lot of swelling going on inside the disc from all the inflammation from that annular tear. So the annular tear is inflamed and that's why people get back pain. It's the tear in the disc. It's not the herniation itself, but the tear that causes all the pain. So he has, there's no suction here. He has a tear in the wall of his disc called the annular annulus fibrosis. And that tear, let's not waste time with that is um, what's causing the pain he's feeling because the tear itself is inflamed. Okay, and uh, the inflammation, which we all have had inflammation in our lives, causes swelling, swelling, edema. You've probably seen edema before. Why do we not have irrigation? And he's moving. Come on guys, the basics we gotta get, get, it, get it going. All right, so we're inside the disc. We're inside the disc itself right now at L5S1. And he had a t uh, 9 out of 10, no, 9 to 10 out of 10 pain from this disc. And he, it's pretty much his typical pain he gets. So is this patient's chronic back pain real? Yes. And is it coming from the disc? Yes. Look at all this damaged disc. This is all swollen edematous fragments of disc. Let's get the uh, laser in here. So my job today is going to be to repair this disc without fusing it, without metal, without fusion, without going through his belly, without hospitalization. Everything is done outpatient. This whole surgery you're watching is an outpatient surgery and we're not at the hospital, okay? So hospitals right now are full of patients with COVID. It's not a safe place to do any elective surgeries. Well, he's moving a little bit. So the movement he's having is called, uh, he's just basically sleeping. So people move in their sleep and he's moving a little bit and I don't, I just want our anesthesiologist to be aware He's strapped down well, I'm sure. Look at all this blue stuff that's kind of bulging out like that. See that? That's from pressure inside the disc. And the pressure comes from swelling, from inflammation. If you, if you have inflammation after, for example, a broken arm or broken leg, you notice that it swells up. And when they put the cast on, then they take that cast off later. They may have to reapply it if you have a lot of swelling because the cast won't fit right because your limb is swollen so bad. So they have to do another um, casting when the swelling goes down after a couple of weeks. And the reason is simple. The swelling puts pressure on the tissues and it causes pain. And that's what this patient's suffering from. So his last disc that was fixed was fixed with a fusion. 
through the belly. A very dangerous type of surgery compared to this surgery you're watching now. So do we do fusions here? Yeah, we've done many fusions at Duke Spine. I've done over a thousand lumbar fusion patients, surgeries. And I average two discs of fusion. So I've done over 2000 disc fusions. So it's not that we don't know how to do fusions. There's a piece of herniation right there. It's not that we don't know how to do fusions. It looks like a little blue octopus. Um, it's that it's, it's a much better surgery to do the laser disc repair. There's no metal, there's no fusion. It's safer, it's a faster recovery. Now this patient, uh, patients may take narcotic painkillers when they come to us because of chronic pain. Uh, however, um, we don't give people narcotic painkillers or opioid painkillers for this surgery because it's not necessary. They only take Tylenol and maybe a muscle relaxer called Flexerol. So the uh, pain medication we use after the surgery is pretty mild. That's because there's no big incision, there's no dissecting the muscles and doing a lot of trauma. The, the only reason why patients need painkillers after back surgery is because the surgery is so traumatic to the body. It causes trauma, which causes inflammation in all the muscles and tissues, mostly muscles. And so patients after back surgery need narcotic painkillers when the surgery is traumatic. So the less traumatic surgery is, the less likely they need painkillers. That's why with the Duke laser disc repair, our pa oh, that's under so much pressure. That's why with the Duke laser, it's kind of like popping a zit really is what we're doing, except with a zit you get pus from infection. Well, there's no infection in this man's disc, it's inflammation. And that inflammation is just destroying the disc. So that's what we're going to fix. We're going to get rid of the source of inflammation, which is the interposed nucleus herniation, the herniation that's stuck in the annular tear in the back. We're going to get rid of that source of inflammation. The swelling will go down over time. Again, he's moving a little bit. I'm, I'm OK with it as long as you're OK with it. And um, the swelling will go down and the, and the pain is going to abate and the disc will heal. But it can't heal as long as the cause of inflammation is still there. And that's what I'm removing right now. So I hope that makes sense to everybody. The more traumatic your back surgery is or neck surgery is, the more powerful painkillers you need to be on afterwards. The less traumatic your surgery is, the less pain medication you need for the surgery afterwards. And our patients take pain medicine, Tylenol, usually for one day, and then their pain is gone. They have no more pain. Now, some patients, of course, have to take it for a week or even a few days, but we never have anybody that takes their pain meds for the surgery past usually two or three days. So that's how minimally invasive and safe this surgery is for the body. All right, how are we doing over there? Everything good, doctor? I'm gonna be done. I'm going to be done in uh, 10 minutes. So I use the laser mostly to release the scar tissue from the chronic inflammation, release the herniation fragments, and to remove the uh, degenerated swollen nuclear material, which is the blue stuff. Okay, normal disc does not stain blue. The annulus fibrosis does not stain blue. Only degenerated nucleus propulsus stains blue. And the way it gets degenerated is inflammation. Do you have questions there, Diego? Yes. All right, you got to tell me when you have a yes. question. What is the natural course of the condition if left untreated? The natural course of this condition, if left untreated, is just pain and inflammation. So the patient's pain will persist for their lifetime. It'll never go away. We have people that have back pain for 30, 40 years that have this condition that's easy to fix in, in a one-hour procedure like this. 
and they could have gotten rid of it in one hour and had a lifetime without pain. So we know the natural history of degenerated disc or herniated disc causing back pain is that the back pain persists for their lifetime. It can get worse. It can actually bulge out more like you're seeing here. Very easy to do, right? So under pressure, when the disc is itself is under pressure from all the swelling and inflammation, it's easy for people to re-herniate, to herniate more, to get more of this jelly to come out because it's so swollen and under pressure. It's like a zit ready to pop. So the more inflammation going on in the disc, the more likely it's going to pop out through the tear that's already there, the annular tear. You know, zits don't pop inward. Zits pop outward. They pop through what's called the path of least resistance. And that's what this disc is doing. It's like boiling up with pressure from inflammation and then it wants to pop and guess where it pops? It pops through the tear in the back of the disc. The same tear where the nerves are that we had to pass by in order to get here. So it's really easy to understand this. I mean, I've studied it for now 26 years and unfortunately 99.9% .9 of doctors don't understand any of this. So they can't help you. They can't understand what to do, how to fix it, what's causing the pain. They just tell people to go live with the pain, take pain pills, narcotics. We have a whole country full of addicted people on pain pills who are even dying from overdosing off prescription narcotics. Why? Because doctors don't know how to fix their pain. I mean, I read posts all the time on Facebook, on social media about people who have had back surgeries. Like I read one this morning about a woman that has eight back surgeries and still in so much pain she needed a morphine pump. That's unheard of at Duke Spine. We usually fix our patients with one surgery and that's it. They don't need any more surgeries. So when I see that, I, re I recognize that unfortunately there's a lot of doctors that don't know how to fix back pain and neck pain. And <laughs> I try teaching them, but they don't listen, unfortunately. So here we are broadcasting worldwide, free, no charge. Everyone can watch the whole surgery. They can all benefit from watching and learning. And we cure these patients all the time. We have never had a failure with Duke Laser Disc Repair, never. We've had patients who have re-herniated re their discs. About 1%, 1 in 100 will re-injure their disc and they'll have pain come back. But they always, it's almost always from doing something they're not supposed to do. Lifting something heavy, um, going back to work too quick and lifting things usually, or a physical therapist who bends the patient at their waist and causes the disc to re-herniate. So, you know, you just have to be really careful after the surgery and make sure you follow the instructions and restrict your movements and restrict your lifting. The movement you have to restrict is bending, bending at the waist. If you bend at the waist after surgery too soon, you can blow out the herniation again. Because we're not, we have no ability to close the tear. The tear that's in the annulus fibrosis that allows the herniated nucleus to come out, we, ca we, can, rip we can debride it, but we cannot, rip we cannot close it. Nobody in the world can close it. They've tried closing tears. The systems that have been developed just don't work. And I don't use them because they don't work. So I don't believe in gimmicks. I believe in doing things for people that actually work. So as of 20, uh, 2021 right now, there is no um, treatment that will close the tear when we're done. It's just you got to let your body heal that tear. And that takes time. It literally takes 12 months on average. I mean, about 12 months maximum, probably nine to 12 months. And the reason it takes so long to heal the disc, the tear, is that there's not much blood flow. There's not much blood supply in the disc. It doesn't have much blood. Um, and the reason, I didn't design it that way, obviously, but that's just the fact. Everyone knows that. Because it doesn't have much blood flow, it can't heal quickly. So there's your fat in the epidural space, right around the nerve root. We're just underneath the nerve root. 
and I followed the tear. We saw earlier that, that pinkish thing, that was the end plate of S1. So we're not doing anything with the end plate, that's part of the bone. This is not a bone problem, it's a disc problem, a joint problem. We, we've known for hundreds of years that joints that are inflamed cause horrible pain. And this is no exception. This patient's joint that's causing his pain is his disc. The disc is a joint. It's not a typical joint. It's not a diarthrodial joint with a synovial membrane, but it is a joint nonetheless. And unfortunately, it hasn't been recognized as being a source of pain by most doctors. They don't recognize it as a source of pain. So, all right, what questions do you have? Yes, doctor, someone's asking, We're done. what are you doing right now? I'm using the laser to clean the tear. And now down there is the end plate of S1 right there. So the tear that's here, you can see it, is where the blue stuff is sticking through. And I've cleaned the tear. Th those fibers right there are what are called the posterior longitudinal ligament. And I've gotten rid of the herniation. I've gotten rid of the debris of the tear. And that's just a little bit of fat. That's normal stuff. We don't want to mess with it. We're going to leave that alone. So we are done. Oh, uh, we have another question. Sure. Can laser repair an OPLL? Laser cannot repair OPLL. OPLL is, scope off, OPLL is ossification of the posterior longitudinal ligament. And what that is, is uh, calcification of the ligament. Calcification of the posterior longitudinal, we just showed you the posterior longitudinal ligament, right? You guys saw that. Almost done, almost done. Just lay still, buddy. I'm literally finishing up. No, we're done. All done, don't worry. I don't think so. Okay, you're doing great. All right, so I'll come and answer s the rest of the questions. Uh, I'm coming over there right now. Our EBO was one mil. Um, we didn't need to do the left side, but I still accessed it. Raytech off the field. All right, go ahead and type up your questions. This was a, a one level di disc repair. The next one we're doing is a one level as well. Come on. I feel, I really feel great. I mean, well, before the operation, I could only walk up maybe 100 feet and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym that I'm able to do what I can do there. I'm kind of an inspiration for a lot of people at the gym. <laughs> My name is Greg Spadaro. Um, this is my father, Jack Spadaro. We are from Connecticut. We moved down here. For me, it's been about 20 years. I think my father's been down here a good 24 years now. And uh, we've been two individuals that have kind of suffered with back pain and problems for a good portion of our lives. My situation started back in 1964. I had uh, an injury bowling in uh, it was not a, not a serious injury, but someone at the time recommended me going to a chiropractor at that time. And uh, I went to this guy and I went to see him and he uh, ended up uh, rupturing my disc. It was the first operation. It was a neurosurgeon in Hartford, Connecticut named Dr. Scoville. And he did an excellent job. And for years after that, I was fine until I got here in Florida again and my back problem started again. But uh, we went up to uh, Tampa. I had several uh, laser surgeries done, which actually only aggravated my situation. And then locally, we had a neurosurgeon here that uh, became well, well uh, respected as, as, as an excellent surgeon. And he operated on me twice. 
and my situation only got worse. Uh, I, had, I was bent over with the pain in my left side for a long time, almost two years. And then I heard my son telling me about uh, Dr. Duke. And uh, so I ended up going up to see Dr. Duke and explained my situation to him, how I, I was uh, in such pain and such. And he, he took an x-ray and evaluated me and he showed me on the x-ray how my operation actually had come apart. The diffusion that they, they did locally here was, had come apart and it, the, the nerve was being impinged on by the, uh, the bone. So um, he recommended to me that, he, that we needed to be operated on and he told me what he was gonna do and how he was gonna do it and that, uh, that he felt he can help me. He was so convincing and I was so desperate at that point because of the pain I was in that, that I ended up going ahead and, and we did the operation. He did uh, L2 to S, S, S1. So four levels. And it was a major operation. And uh, thank God, uh, thank Dr. Duke that he gave me my lifestyle back again because from the, from the moment after we came out of the, uh, the uh, recovery room, I was able to stand straight. I told my, even that time, even though I was still under anesthesia, I said, I could feel I'm standing straight with no pain. He even made me dance a little bit at that point in time, you know, which was kind of funny, you know, but uh, I've never, I, outside of the, uh, I've never taken any pain pills. I mean, it's amazing with the kind of pain that I had originally. After the operation, it was totally gone. And uh, so from my standpoint, my lifestyle is back. I stand straight, I have no pain. I go to the gym twice a week. I walk every day, and there's very few things that I can't do at this point in time, especially at 80 years old. I'm very proud to say that. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stand and hold him like this before the operation. Come on. I feel, I really feel great. I mean, well, before the operation, I could only walk up maybe 100 feet and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym that I'm able to do what I can do there. I'm kind of an inspiration for a lot of people at the gym. <laughs> I still do all the, all the maintenance of the house myself. I do the lawn. Fertilize. I, do, I trim the bushes. I do the pool. Yeah. I, I do pretty much everything. The fact that I can do this now is, is unbelievable. I couldn't walk. I couldn't lift a finger until uh, until I had the operation. It's easy to recommend to Dr. Duke and his staff up there because they're professional in every stance of the word. Uh, my operation, as I say, it, it was a big operation. And uh, as far as pain medicine, I didn't have to take any pain medicine after, after the operation, which was significant because I'm allergic to pain medicine, which causes other problems for me. So I would recommend Dr. Duke and his staff uh, without reservation. Come on. I feel, I really feel great. I mean, well, before the operation, I could only walk up maybe 100 feet and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym that I'm able to do what I can do there. I'm kind of an inspiration for a lot of people at the gym. <laughs> My name is Greg Spadaro. Um, this is my father, Jack Spadaro. We are from Connecticut. We moved down here. For me, it's been about 20 years. I think my father's been down here a good 24 years now. And uh, we've been two individuals that have kind of suffered with back pain and problems for a good portion of our lives. My situation started back in 1964. I had uh, an injury bowling in uh, it was not a, not a serious injury, but someone at the time recommended me going to a chiropractor at that time. And uh, 
I went to see, I, and I went to see him and he uh, ended up uh, rupturing my disc. It was the first operation. It was a neurosurgeon in Hartford, Connecticut named Dr. Scoville. And he did an excellent job. And for years after that, I was fine until I got here in Florida again and my back problems started again. But uh, we went up to uh, Tampa. I had several uh, laser surgeries done, which actually only aggravated my situation. And then locally, we had a neurosurgeon here that uh, became well, well uh, respected as, as, as an excellent surgeon, and he operated on me twice. And my situation only got worse. Uh, I, had, I was bent over with the pain in my left side for a long time, like almost two years. And then I heard my son telling me about uh, Dr. Duke and uh, so I ended up going up to see Dr. Duke and explained my situation to him, how I, I was uh, in such pain and such. And he, he took an x-ray and evaluated me and he showed me on the x-ray how my operation actually had come apart. The, the fusion that they, they did locally here was, had come apart and it, the, the nerve was being impinged on by the, uh, the bone. So. Um, he recommended to me that, he, that we needed to be operated on and he told me what he was going to do and how he was going to do it and that, uh, that he felt he can help me. He was so convincing and I was so desperate at that point because of the pain I was in that, that I ended up going ahead and, and we did the operation. He did uh, L2 to S, S, S1. So four levels. And it was a major operation. And uh, thank God, uh, thank Dr. Duke that he gave my lifestyle back again because from the, from the moment after we came out of the, uh, the uh, recovery room, I was able to stand straight. I told my, even that time, even though I was still under anesthesia, I said, I could feel him standing straight with no pain. He even made me dance a little bit at that point in time, you know, which was kind of funny, you know, but uh, I've never, outside of the, uh, I've never taken any pain pills. I mean, it's amazing with the kind of pain that I had originally. After the operation, it was totally gone. And uh, so from my standpoint, my lifestyle is back. I stand straight, I have no pain. I go to the gym twice a week. I walk every day. And there's very few things that I can't do at this point in time, especially at 80 years old. I'm very proud to say that. I couldn't, uh, I couldn't stand and hold him like this before the operation. Come on. I feel, I really feel great. I mean, well, before the operation, I could only walk up maybe 100 feet and I had to go back in the house. Now I could walk pretty much two miles every morning. In fact, they marvel at me at the gym. All right, it's too dark. I'll go come down for. Yeah, that's better. Okay. I'm ready. Cool. Uh, where's the difference in the two? No, you gotta start me live. Uh, you are ready. Oh, yeah. all right. Mm -hmm. I guess we're live. So I'm Dr. Deke Majin, and we have just wrapped up a Duke laser disc repair at L5-S1 on a patient who's had a prior fusion at L4-5 and they have developed back pain below the fusion. Have a seat. The uh, pain comes from a tear in the back of the L5-S1 disc with a small disc bulge. Most doctors would overlook this as the source of the pain. They wouldn't recognize that that's the cause of his back pain. We decided to go on both sides because the patients had symptoms on both sides and what we found was that the left side was not really causing his pain, but the right side of the disc was. And that's where the tear was that led to the back where all the inflammation was. Of note with this case, there was a lot of swelling inside the disc with a lot of intradiscal pressure, like a zit or a volcano just wanting to explode with all that pressure. So when we got in, you could actually see herniated uh, nuclear material that was degenerated. It was blue, staining blue with our, our dye that we use. It was just pushing up into the endoscopic tube under pressure. Normally we don't see it that bad, so his disc was under horrible pressure from all the inflammation. Inflammation comes from the tear 
and it's inflammation in the tear that spreads throughout the disc and creates pressure. It's kind of like a balloon. When you take a balloon, you apply pressure to the hole in the balloon and the whole balloon expands. So the pressure was coming from the annular tear in the back of the disc where all the inflammation was, and that's where the pain source was as well. So we got in there and cleaned that up. I think he'll do really well. Do you have any questions for us? Yes. What is the difference in Duke laser disc repair than any other laser surgeries that neurosurgeons offer? Not a great question. So first of all, what's the difference between Duke laser disc repair, what we do here, versus laser surgery other neurosurgeons offer? The truth is there's not many neurosurgeons offering laser surgery. I'm not aware of any, as a matter of fact. There was Laser Spine Institute. They went out of business almost two years ago. And I have friends who work there as surgeons. They said they never really used the laser. All they did was a microdiscectomy. Uh, they called it their Laser Spine, Spine Institute, but they really didn't use the laser. Okay. I don't know of any other surgeons that use the laser. I know of surgeons who do endoscopic surgery where they put the tube in and they work on the spine. However, they don't use the laser. So we're one of the few places in the world that actually use a laser. So there really is no difference. Um, there is a laser used with uh, certain types of spine injuries uh, by pediatric uh, neurosurgeons where they can go in and they can do a dorsal rhizotomy where they cut the back of the nerves to relieve pain in patients with uh, spasticity most notably cerebral palsy so a lot of cerebral palsy patients have damaged their brain and they have tightness of their limbs and they can go in there and release the back of the nerves to give that patient some relief and I've seen the laser used in that case but it's not the same type of laser so I would say there are very few surgeons in the world that use a laser. And um, what they do with the laser, typically if they do use it, they're going to do a, dis a discectomy, which is remove the herniation. They don't do an annular debridement. The key to my surgery and the success of my surgery is the annular debridement. That's, that was done here first and published here. Mm -hmm. okay. So all our questions. We'll mm -hmm. see you in about 30 minutes for the next surgery.